Hello, today we'll be going through practice questions 1 to 10 for the CompTIA Security X exam. Let's begin. A CRM company leverages a CSP pass service to host and publish its SaaS product. Recently, a large customer requested that all infrastructure components must meet strict regulatory requirements, including configuration management, patch management, and lifecycle management. Which of the following organizations is responsible for ensuring those regulatory requirements are met? The correct answer is A. The CRM company Because the CRM company is providing the SaaS product, it is responsible for ensuring that the infrastructure and platform configuration it uses complies with regulatory requirements. Even though the product is hosted on the CSP's past service, the shared responsibility model applies. The CSP manages the underlying cloud platform, but the SaaS provider is accountable for security and compliance of its own applications, configurations, patching, and lifecycle management. The customer simply consumes the SaaS, and the regulatory body only enforces compliance. It does not implement it. Why the other options are incorrect? B. The CRM company's customer the customer is only consuming the SaaS service. They do not control how the infrastructure is configured or maintained. C. The CSP The CSP is responsible for the underlying platform and infrastructure security, but not for ensuring that the SaaS provider's application and configuration meet specific regulatory requirements. D. The regulatory body The regulatory body defines and enforces compliance rules but it is not responsible for implementing or maintaining the infrastructure in line with those requirements. Therefore, the correct answer is A. A security analyst is investigating a possible insider threat incident that involves the use of an unauthorized USB from a shared account to exfiltrate data. The event did not create an alert. The analyst has confirmed the USB hardware ID is not on the device allow list, but has not yet confirmed the owner of the USB device. Which of the following actions should the analyst take next? The correct answer is C. Classify the incident as a true positive. The analyst has verified that the USB hardware ID is unauthorized. That means the detection of an unauthorized device is valid, even though the alert was not automatically generated. Since the analyst confirmed that the suspicious activity actually violated policy, the correct classification is a true positive. Why do the options are incorrect? A. False positive. A false positive occurs when an alert is raised for an event that is not actually malicious. In this case, the activity is malicious and unauthorized, so it is not a false positive. B. False negative. A false negative is when a malicious event occurs but is not detected. While the system didn't generate an alert, the analyst has already detected and confirmed the unauthorized device manually, so it is not a false negative from the analyst's perspective. D. True negative. A true negative means no alert is raised because there was no malicious activity. Here, malicious activity did occur, so it cannot be classified as a true negative. Therefore, the correct answer is C. A software development company wants to ensure that users confirm the software is legitimate when installing it. Which of the following is the best way for the company to achieve this security objective? The correct answer is A. Code signing Code signing is the best method because it allows the software development company to digitally sign its applications with a trusted certificate. When users install the software, their system verifies the signature, confirming the software is authentic, has not been tampered with, and originates from the legitimate publisher. Why do the options are incorrect? B. Non-repudiation This is a benefit of digital signatures in general, but it's not the specific mechanism used to confirm software legitimacy to end users. C. Key escrow Key escrow is for securely storing encryption keys for recovery not for validating software authenticity. D. Private keys. Private keys are what the company uses internally to sign code, but on their own, they do not provide legitimacy to users. It's the process of code signing with those keys that achieves the goal. Therefore, the correct answer is A. PKI can be used to support security requirements in the change management process. Which of the following capabilities does PKI provide for messages? The correct answer is A. Non-repudiation. P. 
PKI provides non-repudiation for messages by using digital signatures. When a sender signs a message with the private key, the recipient can verify it with the sender's public key. This ensures the message truly came from the claimed sender and prevents the sender from later denying it. Why the other options are incorrect? B. Confidentiality Confidentiality is achieved with encryption, not with PKI's signing function. C. Delivery receipts These are part of email or messaging systems, not a core PKI feature. D. Attestation Attestation refers to proving that a system or device is genuine and secure, not to securing messages with PKI. Therefore, the correct answer is A. Several unlabeled documents in a cloud document repository contain cardholder information. Which of the following configuration changes should be made to the DLP system to correctly label these documents in the future? The correct answer is C. Regular expressions DLP systems use pattern matching techniques such as regular expressions to identify sensitive data like credit card numbers. By configuring regex patterns that match the format of cardholder data, the DLP system can automatically detect and label such documents in the future. Why the other options are incorrect? A. Digital Rights Management DRM controls how documents are used or shared but does not help in detecting or labeling cardholder data. B. Network Traffic Decryption Decrypting traffic allows inspection of data in transit but does not address labeling documents stored in the repository. D. Watermarking Watermarking marks documents for ownership or tracking but does not classify them based on sensitive content. Therefore, the correct answer is C. A systems administrator at a web hosting provider has been tasked with renewing the public certificates of all customer sites. Which of the following would best support multiple domain names while minimizing the amount of certificates needed? The correct answer is C. SAN A SAN certificate is designed to secure multiple domain names with a single certificate. This is the best option for minimizing the number of certificates required while still supporting multiple customer domains. Why the other options are incorrect? A. OCSP This is used for real-time certificate revocation checks, not for supporting multiple domains. B. CRL This is a list of revoked certificates. It does not help reduce the number of certificates needed. D. CA This is an entity that issues certificates. While required, it does not itself enable consolidation of multiple domains into fewer certificates. Therefore, the correct answer is C. A senior cybersecurity engineer is solving a digital certificate issue in which the CA denied certificate issuance due to failed subject identity validation. Which of the following steps within the PKI enrollment process would the denial have occurred? The correct answer is A. RA the RA is responsible for validating the identity of the certificate requester during the PKI enrollment process. If subject identity validation fails, the RA would deny the request before the CA issues a certificate. Why the other options are incorrect? B. OCSP This is used after issuance to check revocation status of certificates, not during enrollment. C. CA the CA issues certificates but relies on the RA for identity validation. The denial happens at the RA stage, not the CA. D. IDP An IDP authenticates users for applications and services, not for PKI enrollment certificate validation. Therefore, the correct answer is A. A security administrator is setting up a virtualization solution that needs to run services from a single host. Each service should be the only one running in this environment. Each environment needs to have its own operating system as a base but share the kernel version and properties of the running host. Which of the following technologies would best meet these requirements? The correct answer is A. Containers Containers are the best fit here because they isolate services so each runs in its own environment, yet they all share the host system's kernel. Each container can have its own file system, libraries, and configurations but they rely on the host OS kernel instead of requiring separate guest operating systems like hypervisors do. Why the other options are incorrect? B. Type 1 hypervisor. This runs directly on hardware and provides full virtual machines, each with its own OS and kernel. This does not match the requirement to share the host kernel. 
C. Type 2 Hypervisor. This runs on top of an existing OS, still requiring separate guest OS instances for each VM, so they do not share the host kernel. D. VDI. This provides user desktops as VMs, not lightweight isolated environments sharing the kernel. E. Emulation. This simulates hardware or other platforms entirely in software, which is inefficient and unnecessary for this use case. Therefore, the correct answer is A. A company has data it would like to aggregate from its PLCs for data visualization and predictive maintenance purposes. Which of the following is the most likely destination for the tech data from the PLCs? The correct answer is D. Local historian. In industrial environments, PLCs typically send their tech data to a historian system. A local historian is specifically designed to collect, store, and organize time series data from control systems. This data can then be used for visualization, trend analysis, and predictive maintenance. Why the other options are incorrect? A. External drive. This is not a practical or scalable destination for continuous PLC tech data collection. B. Cloud storage. While data may eventually be pushed to the cloud for analysis, the most likely initial destination for raw PLC data is a historian. C. System aggregator. This is a vague option. In practice, the function of aggregation and long-term storage in industrial contexts is handled by a historian. Therefore, the correct answer is D. Which of the following is the best way to protect the website browsing history for an executive who travels to foreign countries where internet usage is closely monitored? The correct answer is A. DOH DNS over HTTPS encrypts DNS queries, which prevents third parties from easily seeing what websites the executive is visiting. This is the best option listed for protecting browsing history in environments with close internet monitoring. Why the other options are incorrect? B. EAP TLS. This is an authentication protocol used for secure network access, not for protecting browsing history. C. Geofencing. This restricts access or triggers actions based on location, not related to hiding browsing activity. D. Private browsing mode. This prevents local storage of browsing history on the device, but it does nothing to hide activity from ISPs or foreign government monitoring. Therefore, the correct answer is A. We have come to the end of today's video. If you liked the video, please make sure to like and subscribe. Goodbye.